The Philadelphia Eagles started free agency with a bang, signing Javon Hargrave to a three-year deal worth $39 million and making him the highest paid nose tackle in the NFL. But why did they go out of their way to secure that spot? Why were the Eagles so willing to guarantee the 27-year-old $26 million over that time frame? What does he bring to the Eagles' defense and what impact will he have moving forward? My name is Liam Jenkins and it is time for another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, as always thank you so much for taking time out of your daily lives to watch our content and a huge well done to everyone who scored a perfect 10 in our merch giveaway. There is still time to enter, there will be 3 names drawn out of 3 separate hats. So to be in with a chance of winning you need a score of 8 or above, but a big shout out to everyone who's entered so far, there are so many of you, we'll be hosting plenty more so don't worry about that. And as always make sure you grab your daily dosage of Philadelphia sports content from Philly Sports. Sportsnetwork.com. And one final message before we get underway, guys. I'm so excited to announce that tomorrow, Friday, the 27th of March, we will be hosting a live stream with former NFL safety and Delaware product Mike Adams, a 16 year veteran who's going to be joining us, answering your questions in a live interactive experience at 7 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Get on this YouTube channel and have a chat with one of the greatest safeties to come out of Delaware. So let's start with some background info and I think probably the most pressing question is if Javon Hargrave is so good then why was he allowed to walk out of Pittsburgh and the simple answer was that he played his way out of their salary cap. The Steelers simply had to decide in their free fall scheme who they'd rather pay. It's looking like Brad Dupree will be franchise tagged and this is someone that only played in 50 to 60% of snaps and came off in nickel packages which as we know are starting to become the norm in the NFL but Hargrave in the right system could be an absolute force to be reckoned with. Let me show you why. The first thing I want to show you is this reactionary play that he's got. Yes, he's a big boy at six foot two, 305 pounds, but he reads the game very well and moves accordingly, and he's extremely agile for that size. So take a look at this. He's got to get his hands right into the chest of the right guard, and already you can see the eyes. He's keeping his head up past the guard, ready to adjust, and it looks like he's out of the play, but he throws number 73 off of him and dives into the lane to close the gap and make a big time tackle. There's a better example of it here. You can see him lined up a little bit further outside in the three techniques, so between the guard and the tackle, and he's got to disengage a run block again. He gets tossed into the path of Austin Blythe, but watch those eyes, similar sort of thing, throws Blythe off and moves into the path of the running back to nullify the game. It's what he does best in my opinion, it's that vision, it's that block shedding, it's that awareness of what's going on. There's another great highlight of it here from against the Cleveland Browns. It's very easy to see nose tackles as just run stuffers or gap pluggers, but look at the eyes here. He can see that Mayfield doesn't have the ball which tells him the running back does and in one swift motion that tight hand usage is able to just throw off the offensive lineman again into the path of the running back you love to see it and it's useful in pass rushing as well this was a clutch situation late in the game against the Ravens drive his hands into the chest of the experienced Marshall Yander who's no slouch but look at the eyes he's focusing on Lamar Jackson he knows Lamar's going to escape so instinctively throws Yander to the ground goes after Jackson and gets the sack. Not only was that a huge play, but Marshall Yander is no baby toy, all right? He's six foot three, 305 pounds. That's not an easy thing to do. So what else makes him so good? Let's take a look at what is simply an explosive first step. Like he leaps out. I mean, that's some Cristiano Ronaldo step over level first step in right there. That's unbelievable for a man of his size to just leap out of his spot like that into a gap and immediately fill the hole. He's so much more versatile than just a nose tackle. And that ability there to not just get a good first step, to keep those legs driving, to drive that momentum through. Slow this play down, shifts inside there with some Ronaldo wizardry, uses his arms to rip away and just seeks out the running back like a human homing missile. The guy's absolutely ridiculous. And I just feel like we're adding layer after layer to his game. So now we've got an explosive first step, we've got a nice amount of vision, and now we're just going to add sheer power. Look at him drive back the Raven centre. Now this was a matchup that caused problems all game. It was probably the toughest one that I watched for him. But he lines up here against Ronnie Stanley, a man who had an 87 grade on Pro Football Focus, didn't give up a sack all year. He's got to engage with him, get his hands onto his chest. It's a bit of a war in the trenches, keeps his legs driving, and look at this, drives the man over. This is one of the best upcoming tackles in the league, and he manhandled him. 
Hargrave has got that thick base that Timmy Jernigan has, but what he's got on top of that is a lot of horsepower in that engine room, which enables him to keep those legs churning. And this demands double teams, which allows, as you can see on the outside, other names, some very tasty names on that Pittsburgh defensive front, that freedom to do what they do best. And that's what the Eagles have missed, because Timmy Jernigan, when healthy, did that job to some degree, but he wasn't as versatile as this player. He wasn't as disruptive as this player. Like, look at this. He just reeks through a double team and breaks up a screen pass. It's unbelievable. Watch the depth he gets here against the Rams right guard. He's being double teamed there, throws his weight back inside again, hands nice and tight in the chest and just ball rushes. Like, just says, you know what? If I can't go around you, I'm gonna go through you and drives him home. We see this time and time again in his tape and it's just fun to watch. He's not flashy because he was never put in a spot to be. He's not regarded as an explosive pass rusher because he's not, but he is a fundamentally sound nose tackle that can not only plug the gaps, can not only swallow up double teams with that core strength, but can penetrate like this. Like, look at the relentless strength. The motor that just does not stop constantly driving back, forcing Jimmy G off his spot. And yes, it's a check down, but he prevents a much bigger play. I feel like this may be one of my favorite plays. The Browns are just going to run a nice counter. They're going to pull Joel Batonio. And you're going to see manhandled here. Chubb's got nice freeway running. Cuts back inside. Hargrave out of the picture sees this and goes, again. I can't go around you. I'll just drive you into Nick Chubb. I'll make sure that ball doesn't go anywhere and that's gonna be a minimal gain because I said so. And then there are plays like this where that motor just hustles and hustles. It does not relent whatsoever. He's gonna get worked out of this play. There's a double team there and it looks like Baker Mayfield's gonna take off and go dead play. There's no way that defensive tackle's coming back. Oh wait, never mind. He's not gonna stop running until the whistle goes and especially in this defense, you need that. There's another one here that just shows Showcases his lateral agility. He uses that big frame to leverage well and drive and drive off the block and then straight into the running back. That's an amazing play. He's like a magnet to the football. Like even here, he gets thrown in and then before you know it, has somehow latched onto the ball carrier and made a play. There's just a motor that does not stop going until the play is over. A great example against the Niners here. He actually gets pushed into the pile. This is some Carson Wentz level wizardry here, okay? He's on his knees, gets up out of it, so quick into the face of the quarterback and forces Garoppolo to throw it away in a clutch situation. It does not get better than that. Javon Hargrave is a player that ticks every box the Eagles need. Yes, he may have been used as a zero technique, which meant he was predominantly lined up over the center during his time with the Steelers, but ignore that because what you see on tape are traits of someone that can be so disruptive, that can be so poignant against the run, that can use his frame and that thick lower foundation not only to swallow double teams, not only to take pressure off Fletcher Cox, but to drive home to the quarterback, but to penetrate those holes, and more than anything, just to allow those guys outside to thrive. Because the Eagles have struggled. Again, in the last couple of years, they have not been able to find any depth behind Fletcher Cox. And Jernigan may have had his day in 2017, but since then, the depth has been minimal. Even DT3 and 4 have picked up injuries. Hassan Ridgeway was no exception to that last year. And a lot of people look to this move and say, well, what does that mean for Malik Jackson, who was also paid a similar contract last year and ended 2019 on injured reserve. Well, the beauty of both of these players is that, well, Jackson can play the five tech. He can line up over an offensive tackle as a defensive end in a position group where, as we know right now, it's pretty thin. You've got Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett, who may or may not have his fifth year option picked up, but below those guys, it's an uncertain future. Vinny Curry is not yet back with the team. We don't know what the future holds for guys like Sharif Miller or if there is untapped potential in Josh Sweat. And I'd like to think that maybe with a new defensive line coach, we see a renewed energy around the development of those younger players, but we don't know. All we know for sure is that the Eagles have a generational talent in Fletcher Cox and someone they've been unable to get the most out of because of either injury or because they don't have the supporting pieces around him to let him thrive. And if Cox is being double teamed every play, and those defensive ends still can't get open, then it's not going to benefit the corners who are already struggling. You add a lockdown corner in Darius Slay, who will force the quarterback to stand in the pocket just a little bit more because he can't look at his number one receiver. You've then got any one of three players in Fletcher Cox, Malik Jackson, and this man, Javon Hargrave, who can wreak absolute havoc both as run defenders and as pass rushers. And what you have got is a very, very dangerous looking defense. And I cannot wait to see how it pans out next year.
you. But let me know what you think, guys, from myself, Liam Jenkins. Thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget, guys, we've got the live stream tomorrow evening, Friday the 27th of March at 7 p.m. Eastern time right here on our YouTube channel. If you want to get the chance to talk to a former safety, someone that had a 16-year career that grew up in the New Jersey area, this is going to be a really unique experience and hopefully the first of many. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Liam Jenkins PSN. I'll see you next time.